Well, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Arif Malik. Uh, he is joining us today from the University of, of Texas at Dallas. He's the Associate Professor and Associate Department Head for the Mechanical Engineering Department. And I first met Arif uh, when he was doing his PhD thesis at uh, Wright State University under Romana Grande. And I know he had a number of uh, interesting talks about some of his modeling work and the things he had worked on in the past, and he continues to build upon that and his, his capability and skill sets. Uh, his research includes um, metal forming and metal additive manufacturing, as well as laser-based surface engineering type processes. With that, Arif, the floor is yours. Please go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining uh, this talk. Uh, it's entitled Effects of Laser Shock Peening as a post-treatment uh, to laser impact welding. Um, one, one thing I should note that this, this talk actually doesn't really belong in the uh, fatigue, uh, retarding fatigue kind of topic. It actually really is more of a new application or novel application. Um, and I think that you'll, you'll probably get that appreciation as we go through the talk. Uh, the other thing I wanna mention is that everything that I'm presenting here today was done by my PhD student, Sepra Sade. And so he's done all the experimental work, the laser impact welding, laser shock peening, the optical imaging, the uh, scanning electron microscopy, all of the work. And so I really wanna give him the credit uh, for this uh, talk today. All right. So. What we're presenting is the very first published work on the use of laser shock peening as a post-treatment to laser impact welding. And so if you want uh, much more of the detail that I'm going to talk about today, you can take a look at this paper that was published earlier this year in Materials and Design. And so it's a very comprehensive look at uh, um, this new application of laser shock peening. And so, uh, you know, if you, if you find some questions that are not answered today, please take a look at this or contact me afterwards. I'll be happy to go through it. All right. So um, I think everybody in this talk is, is already very familiar with what laser shock peening is. There have been a lot of great talks um, with various applications. And so um, I'm going to introduce, though, a new process uh, for the discussion today called laser impact welding. And in fact, um, uh, the, the, the person who is really the authority on laser impact welding, as well as other types of impact welding, is Professor Glenn Dane at Ohio State, which is just down the road from where LSPT is. Um, but we're the first group that have done two things. We're the first group to apply laser shock peening as a post-treatment to laser impact welding to try to improve the strength. And we're the first group to do a simulation of laser impact welding with the grain structure. And so this talk today is really going to be focused on LSP is sort of a post-treatment to it. So um, in conventional shot peening, as we know, you have a pulsed laser beam that passes typically through a transparent overlay, a blades and an op opaque overlay, and then the plasma that's formed sends shockwave through the target specimen. And, and the purpose of that, of course, is to induce uh, compressive residual stresses, near surface compressive residual stresses, okay? But laser impact welding has similar underlying physics in that there's a plasma creation, but it's a very, very different process. So what happens is we pass a pulsed laser beam through a transparent overlay, but this transparent overlay has to be a solid. So typically we'll use borosilicate glass, for example. Now what we do is we attach to the bottom of that borosilicate glass using just simple double-sided transparent sticky tape. We, we attach a foil called a flyer foil. This is a foil that is gonna be accelerated by the plasma, collide with another foil, and then the two foils are welded together. So typically in this work, we've got 50 micron thick foils, and we're using aluminum 1100 as the flyer foil that's gonna be accelerated. Okay. So the acceleration is created by this plasma explosion, and here, you can kind of see this is this U shape is sort of a depiction of the deformed uh, uh, flyer foil shape as it's being accelerated towards a target foil. So we have another foil, the target, which is basically fixed to a backplate specimen. And this is also in this work, 50 microns thick. Okay. And then so the collision that occurs between these two 50 micron foils happens at hundreds of meters per second or hundreds of miles per hour. And the result of that, if the parameters are set up properly, is a welding between those two, two foils. 
And so the welding actually is primarily mechanical in nature. Okay, and much like you know, the compressive residual stresses in laser shock peening are a result of mostly mechanical behavior. Now, the great thing about laser impact welding is you can weld dissimilar metal alloys. So for example, we can weld aluminum alloys to stainless steel, um, which you cannot do by fusion welding because the aluminum would melt like butter before you soften the steel. And so this is a really, really great um, example of a novel process on a small scale, millimeter or micrometer scale. It can be used in MEMS devices, microelectromechanical devices, and so on to weld dissimilar metal foils. Alternatively, you can, you can weld one foil to a solid substrate. So if you think of like a micro robot that has electrical connections, we could weld, for example, a foil for the electrical connector to some body part of the uh, robot, the micro robot, that is uh, you know, made by some other uh, metal alloy. What we've done in this work is we've attempted to see experimentally if we can improve the strength of the laser impact welds by doing a, an LSP post-treatment. So essentially after the, the two foils are joined together, we then uh, send another laser pulse to try to uh, enhance the strength of this mechanical weld through the passage of shockwave. So we're not really focused on compressive residual stress at this point. So we're not really peening, but we're, it's, it's the passage of additional shockwaves. Let me show you another schematic here. This is so an isometric view. Again, this is on the left, you see an image where you have a fire foil that is being accelerated by the plasma. It's kind of a U shape right there. And then you have a target foil underneath. And so one thing that's characteristic of laser impact welding is you get this jetting of high velocity particles from uh, between the two foils as they collide together at some oblique angle. And on the right image you see here, there's a depiction, you can see a, a micrograph there, where uh, in this case, you get some spring back. There's a welded region, but then you get spring back in the center of this. And, and that will sometimes occur in, in the examples I'm gonna show you. It doesn't occur, it depends on the laser parameters. I'm gonna show you next the simulation here. This is actually part of additional work that we've done um, where we incorporate the grain structure to look at things like grain boundary sliding and so on into it. What you see here is really a temperature plot um, that the temperature is generated from the plastic heat dissipation. But you see the flyer foil being accelerated hundreds of meters per second at a bleak angle as it collides in this Eulerian simulation. You see the material mixing and you see this very, very clear jetting of material because of the opposing shear wakes. Uh, at the interface there. So this is just to sort of illustrate what happens in the impact welding. So what, again, what we're doing is after the weld has happened, we're trying to see if we can do a laser shock treatment with a single spot or multiple spots to see if we can enhance the strength of the weld. The way the weld strength is tested is through lap shear testing, okay? So um, this next image is at the top here, you see an SEM image after the welding, the cross section, you have an aluminum 1100 flyer that's been welded uh, to a stainless steel 304 uh, foil. Both of these are originally 50 microns. And you can see here, there's some sort of waviness and irregular uh, interface behavior. And this is a result of the high, high velocity collision. So we simulated that with grain structure in an Eulerian model. And you can, again, you can see this sort of mechanical interlock here um, that, that uh, mimics the way that uh, the, the inter interface is uh, formed in the, in the SEM image there. And also what you see here is the jetting of particles from this Eulerian simulation. So this, again, is just to sort of um, design to, to, to help us explain what laser impact welding is. One thing of note here in a, in a different study, we looked at um, the aspect ratio of grains. And so uh, before and after the collision, we looked at the aspect, the, vol the, the grain fraction uh, as, as a function of the grain aspect ratio. We saw that there's a lot of elongation in the grains and grain boundary sliding. So that's what these two images on the right show. Okay, so this, this work is mainly experimental though. So let me, for example, just show you the setup in our lab. So we use exactly the same laser for the laser impact welding that we do for the post laser shock treatment on the foils once they're welded. And so this is a, this is a uh, near infrared Q-switch ND YAG laser. Um, uh, the, the, the main parameter of interest we're using, we're using a beam diameter of 3.2 millimeters for the laser impact welding and for the post laser shock peening. 
The fluence is, um, is about uh, 34 joules per square centimeter and the, the peak power density is, is close to two gigawatts per square centimeter. So those are the main parameters here. And what you see here is, if you look in the lower left, uh, here's the specimen assembly. Now what we have on this are five sets of foils. The flyer foil in each case, which is painted black, is aluminum 1100. So in each case, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot the laser, uh, have the plasma explosion on the aluminum 1100 flyer. It ex the flyer accelerates across a few tenths of a millimeter at hundreds of meters per second and impacts another foil. And so what we did is we, for the, for the target foil, we used different alloys. So we used commercially pure copper, a brass alloy, stainless steel, stainless steel 304. And I think maybe we used aluminum as well, the same one, okay? Um, here's another schematic that shows the specimen assembly for the laser impact welding. So remember what happens here is you've got these aluminum flyer foils that are painted black on the top to take the laser ablation. And then um, under those, those flyer foils are attached using sticky tape to the bottom of this borosilicate glass transparent overlay. And then there's a standoff distance of a few tenths of a millimeter. Okay, so we use spacers below the borosilicate glass to get the standoff distance. And then um, attached to this backing plate, we have the target foil. So we got brass, copper, and stainless steel. Okay, and so here's a, here's a side view just showing the spacers with a standoff gap. So again, the foils are 50 microns thick and the standoff gap is a few tenths of a millimeter. All right, so after the foils are welded, we do post LSP on them using, we tested a single spot and two spots. And so what I show here in the top right is these are the specimens after they've been laser impact welded, okay? Now, the nice thing is in this, in this double process, you really don't need to do much configuration change. For the LSP, once the specimens are welded, now we're using a water transparent overlay the same laser, slightly different parameters, for example, and now we do we do a single shot or double 100% uh, overlap shot of LSP over each one. And again, the objective is to try to increase the strength of the laser impact weld. Okay, so how is the laser impact weld strength tested? So we use lap shear testing equipment. And so what you see here, this is the machine we have at UT Dallas, and you can see it on the right-hand side, there's a there's a welded specimen right in there. And so we're basically literally just, just pulling apart these to, to put the welded specimens under shear and then pulling them apart until failure, okay? And so here's a, um, an enlarged view. These are before any laser impact, I'm sorry, before any laser shock beating, these are just laser impact welded specimens. So what you see here, this is, a, this is the weld between a brass specimen and the aluminum 1100. And this is the same specimen, but just looking at it from the back side. So it's, it's painted black because of the black paint. And you can see here again, where the, where the weld is and some of the paint has been ablated there in that case. All right. And so now during the lap shear test, what happens is the weld nugget will tend to fracture. And, and so we, we also look at the weld nugget width right there. All right. So um, to try to understand if the laser shock peening can increase the, the laser impact weld strength, we did do some repetitions. So for each of the alloy combinations, we did five repetitions. So five, five sets of samples for the aluminum and the copper, five sets for the aluminum and the brass, five sets for the aluminum and the, and the three or four stainless. And so here's an example of a load versus extension test in the lap shear testing. And then what you see here on the right here, these are just the different, different uh, specimens for the five samples. And then we, and we also looked at, you know, correlation between the weld nugget width and the, uh, the maximum load. And you see there's a very strong correlation there between the maximum load and the weld nugget width in this case. So again, this is before any laser shock treatment on the laser impact weld. This is just to explain the, the lap shear testing procedure. Okay, so this is the raw data for the uh, load versus extension results. When we have laser impact welding by itself, then laser impact welding with a single laser shock spot applied and with a double laser shock applied. So what you see here 
in the it, each of the columns corresponds to a material combination. So for example, in the first column, it's all the aluminum flyer and the brass target. In the second column, it's all the aluminum flyer and the copper target. And then in the third column, it's the aluminum flyer and the stainless steel 304 target. And then for the rows, the first row is laser impact welding only. And then you see five curves because there are five repetitions, five specimens for each case. And then the second one is laser impact welding plus a single LSP shot for each material. And the third row is the laser impact welding with a repeated 100% overlap LSP shot. So two LSP shots, again, for the different material combinations. So this data is a little bit hard uh, to, to sort of interpret, but this is the raw data for it, okay? What you see here in the oh, Thank you. You see here in the box plots. And so in this case, we have here, if you look at this, on the left is for the aluminum brass, the middle one is for the aluminum copper, and then the right is for the aluminum stainless steel. And then you've got laser impact welding by itself, laser impact welding plus a single LSP shot, laser impact welding plus double LSP shot in green, okay? And what we see here is that if we look at the averages, which is the white dashed lines, if we apply a single LSP shot to the laser impact weld, in the case of the brass, blast brass with the aluminum, we increase the strength of the weld significantly, okay? If we apply two LSP shots though, the average is decreased and there's a lot of variability. If we, if we do look at the same thing with aluminum and copper, the single LSP shot on average increases but there's a lot of variability. A double LSP shot decreases the strength. And the stainless steel is a little bit more clear, there's less variability, but the single LSP shot uh, dramatically increases the weld strength, but a double LSP shot decreases it and introduces a lot of variability. Okay, so, you know, there's a lot of questions that are raised by this in information. Let me just show you real quick to wrap up. Here are some optical images of the weld interfaces, just looking at cross section. So this is with the laser impact welding only without the LSP treatment. On the, on the, the top two images, you see the aluminum brass, the middle, you see the aluminum copper, and then you have aluminum and stainless steel there. There's nothing really that's revealed from these optical images. They just show you the, the weld interface. This is for the aluminum and stainless steel 304 with the LSP treatment applied as well. So the top two are with no LSP treatment, just the laser impact welding. The middle are with a single shot of LSP and the bottom are with double LSP shot. And again, on these, with these optical images, you really don't see much. You, the, the foils are welded together and um, there's nothing that shows any sort of interesting stuff. So, so we have to go in closer. So we look at ACM images. This is just for the aluminum flyer and the stainless steel 304 target. And the top one, this is laser impact welding only. You can see the scale here. This is two microns scale right here, okay? And it looks like a relatively flat interface. Now, when we apply a single LSP shot in the middle picture here, you see that there's a waviness that is increased that promotes the mechanical interlocking of this, which helps explain why the weld strength is increased. But when we apply two laser shots after the laser impact weld, we actually see some melting, evidence of melting and cracking here, which also explains why it decreased, the, the, the lap shear test strength decreased in this case. And so here's the summary. Um, the study revealed very first published insights into laser shock peening as a post-treatment to laser impact welding. Okay, the, the laser impact welded foils were subjected to single and double LSP shots to look at the, the effects of weld strength. And then we found that the single laser shots can result in an increase of up to 25% in the average strength attributed to wavier interface geometries, but the results are, are highly variable. Uh, treatments involving two laser shots led to decreases in all of the cases. And of course, a lot of uh, variability as well. And we saw evidence of separations, cracking, melting along the interfaces. So again, finally, this is the very first insights into LSP as a, as a post-treatment beyond fusion-based welding to uh, impact weld process. The nice thing I'll, I'll say to just wrap up is that the post-treatment LSP requires almost no change of equipment. So this is the great thing. You literally are changing the overlay and a few other things, and that's it. So uh, with that, uh, we'll end there and uh, appreciate um, your attention. I can address any questions. Great, thank you, Malik. That was a great presentation. We do have a few questions, uh, and I'm going to ask the first one because I'm kind of curious. You know, we the that's great amount of work that you've done in showing the ability to use a, a technique to join materials together. 
The question I have is where do you see this actually being applied as a technique to make product? Yeah, this is a great question. And so, you know, um, I want to acknowledge again, uh, you know, the professor uh, at Ohio State is really a pioneer of impact welding in general, Glenn Bain. He's written several patents on, on this, including laser impact welding. And some of the, some of the um, applications, because of the small scale millimeter or micrometer scale, you know, uh, foil thickness, for example, um, it's, it's really useful in small scale welding of dissimilar metals because you're not, you, you don't have the heat from fusion welding, so you can you can weld aluminum and stainless steel, for example. And and then so if you think about MEMS devices, micro mirrors, micro robots, all these things that have become really important in the future because of the small scale this is good. But you can also weld things on the millimeter scale as well. So um, the, the discussion of and a patent applied for that um, discussed using laser impact welding to weld the can of a, of a soda can to the actual can itself, rather than using a multiple stage forming process. And so there are lots of applications, but again, it's dissimilar metals. And uh, the LSP has never been investigated before to try to strengthen the laser impact welds. Great, thank you. Uh, we have two other questions. Uh, actually, the two questions we got are from uh, Glenn Dane's uh, graduate students, Dr. Stan Bovid, uh, the first one I've got is from him is what is the current maximum thickness of the flyer that can be achieved with uh, LIW? Uh, I, I actually cannot answer that question. We've only tested 50 micron foils. And okay. this is, you know, um, even with the LSP, we've done very, very little uh, investigation into the effects. We've only tested the single thickness, the, the single size with the different alloys. Um, and so it's really, it's really hard for me to tell. I, I would guess that, you know, uh, depending on the laser spot size and the, um, the, the, the peak power and, and the pulse width, it would vary, but, but the, the foils generally have to be fairly, fairly thin. Of course, the target can be a solid substrate, but the one that excel is accelerating, you know, at hundreds of meters per second across a standoff distance has to be, has to be relatively low in inertia. Great. Um... The other one, is there a need for a solid overlay to prevent water intrusion into the joint or is there another alternative purpose behind the, the solid transparent overlay? Yeah, so the solid, the, the, the reason for the solid transparent overlay, the borosilicate glass um, is simply so that we can attach the flyer foil to the bottom of it uh, so that it has, a, it has a fixed standoff distance. You know, when, when, the, uh, when the flyer is, is essentially you know, uh, accelerated, that standoff distance and the impact angle is really critical to get a good weld. So that if you use a fluid for the, con for, the, for the transparent confining overlay, it would be very difficult to get that standoff distance. But for, that's why for the laser shot beaning though, we can switch to water because, um, um, you know, we don't have to switch to water, but we can switch to water because the two foils already joined together. Great. Uh, last question I got is, um, what causes melting with the second laser peening shot? If you could answer that pretty quickly, it'd be great. Yeah, I, uh, we, we really don't know. Obviously, there's a lot of energy going in from it. And, and it, it could be that we, we didn't prepare enough of the oblique, uh, opaque overlay over it. But um, there's, there's, there's a, a, it could be plastic heat dissipation, a combination of that laser heating. We're, we're really not sure. But that's what it seems to be happening as we, we see evidence of melting. Great. Well, thank you, Malik. I appreciate your uh, presentation. It was